Mr. Daniel Fazio. I'm, uh, I have the pleasure of sitting in your apartment and interviewing you in Tampa, Florida. Um, super excited about this podcast, this kind of interview and just journeying through your life and through your business and other businesses. Um, I guess just like opening up, uh, I would love to hear like the elevator pitch of your business journey to where you are now. Yeah, so um, I graduated Florida State in 2018 with a degree in finance. And the very last week of college, I mean, the very last week I was in there, I saw this video that said, how to make $10,000 per month with Amazon FBA. And I was like, oh, wow, I want to make $10,000 per month. So I watched the guy's videos and I was always like really hard worker in school. Like I always got really good grades. So I just treated it as if it was another class, like, oh, I'm going to have a test at the end of this, except it's like the actual execution of the thing I've, I've been told to it's do. It's life. Yeah. So I watched every single video he had within like a 24 hour span. And it, I don't know, maybe it was like 10 hours of videos or something like that. And I started doing the product research like four days later, I'm at the bank wiring $6,000 over to China to buy, to buy, I worked in college. So I saved a bunch of money. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to risk it all. I don't care. Like we're going to see what happens. Um, it comes in like three weeks later, I shipped it in through air. It goes into the Amazon warehouse and I sold the shit out of those products, but it was, it wasn't because I was smart. It was because I caught something at a very, very specific time. It turned out it was a seasonal product specifically on father's day. And it was May and it was about to be Father's Day. And I got there just before Father's Day and that thing cooked. It was stainless steel beer bottle insulators. Mm. And I made, it was like seven or $8,000 profit. And from the moment it went live within like 10 days, all of it was sold out. And then what happened was I was like, yo, this this is crazy. I need more inventory. I need way, way, way more. So I bought like double the amount. And Father's Day was over at this point. I ended up, like, I didn't lose money on it, but I definitely did not make a lot and took a really long time to return capital on it. Mm-hmm. I ended up buying a bunch of other products, but that kind of set my journey off into, I'd always, like, sold stuff and in, in, in was entrepreneurial as a kid, but it set my journey off into the scale to which you could have something. Because I look at that and I'm like, oh, like $7,000 profit in 10 days. I'm like, if I can just consistently get something like this, I don't have to work a job, Mm. which I just absolutely hated doing. I worked at Publix as a cashier and a bagger. I hated customer service. I worked at Apple. I did customer support for Apple. I hated customer service. I hated, I was really good at it though. I was always, I'm really good at customer service. I just did not enjoy being in one single spot doing the same thing for eight consecutive hours and feeling like I had to ask to go to the bathroom or something like that and being Mm -hmm. like watched over. I just didn't like that. So even now to this day, I don't like watch over my employees. You know what I mean? Like I I kind of just give them the freedom to do it. I'm just, what I kind of tell them though is like get your stuff done and like actually perform. So this was, this was always really annoying to me when I worked at Apple, there was an average call time and it was about 19 minutes. So the average time you would be on the phone with a customer to issue resolution was about 19 minutes. I just knew how to solve the problem. So mine was about 13 minutes. Hmm. And you also have an issue resolution rate and it should be around like 90. Mine was 95%. So I was solving more issues than the average person and doing it faster. But you were getting paid the same. Yeah. One, I was getting paid the same. And two, I had a performance review. And the and you could get a range, like a, a raise in a range somewhere. And these, my manager told me, she goes, you need to spend more time on the phone with the customers. It feels like you're rushing them. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm doing the output of two people at a higher quality and have above average feedback scores. Cause you get like a survey, like how was your experience? And it yeah. was just completely positive. Like they solve the issue. Yeah, he was great. And it was just this arbitrary thing they made up. And it was like, how do you not understand? Like by every conceivable metric, I am way more efficient than any other person. And one, you're punishing me for it. 
And two, in my own mind, I know I'm not getting paid for the more efficient output. Yeah. So you look at these numbers and it's like, well, if I just owned the entity myself, if I'm better than everyone else, I want to be compensated in direct proportion to precisely how much better I am. Yeah. And it was just always annoying me. And there was always situations like even at like Publix and people loved me at, at, at Publix. And I just hated that concept of not having control over the outcome based on my inputs. But mm. I want I wanted something that 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 compensated me directly for my inputs. Right? Um so I did the Amazon FBA stuff and real quick on the Amazon FBA stuff. Do you feel like um you know cuz I think this is like a common thing for probably a lot of people just in like 2020 2021 where they got into business and everything was kind of just easier, right? You initially you started out, you caught this first trend. Do you think that set um, uh, an expectation, I'm not going to say unrealistic, but set an expectation in your head that was different than you would have preferred looking back on it? Or are you glad that it happened like that? Because I know like, you know, a lot of people 2021, especially like traders, right? The market was just going up. So a lot of people were able to make a lot of money. And then a lot of those people lost a lot of that money because it set like an unrealistic expectation of what trading actually was. Yeah. So this is, this is what's going to happen. Most people are going to be introduced to the world of business through some kind of business opportunity, right? So it just so happened that my introduction to the world of like online marketing and business was through Amazon FBA, some guy selling a business opportunity course. Hmm. So, I mean, a lot of people can talk about like, oh, they're selling a course, like it's a scam. It's like, oh, well, not really because I, I couldn't go, like if I went back to that Amazon FBA guy and was like, yeah, you like did make me some money. One, because I actually did the thing, but two, it was more so the introduction into the arena that introduced me to more and more and more and more and more ideas. Yeah. And what I can say in regards to that was I had that experience with Amazon FBA. It required a lot of capital. It was high, it was, it was high, highly capital intensive. It required a lot of money to purchase inventory. So if you wanted to make more money, you needed a lot of capital. So I said to myself, I want something that's more capital efficient. Remember, I had a, I had a finance degree. Yeah. I literally was like thinking of this myself. I didn't need something that's more capital efficient. I need to produce income without needing a large amount of capital. And this is when I started getting Ty Lopez ads mm. for, for social media marketing agency. So I bought that course. It was really good. It was a phenomenal course. A lot of people talk shit about him. And it's like all the people that talk shit about the Ty Lopez social media marketing course like one, didn't buy it, two, bought it and didn't do anything. I bought it and just did the thing like, immediately. Like the, the, the time between me consuming the information and the implementation of the information was near zero. I watched 100% through the content and followed it precisely. It's very direct. This is where people fuck up with a lot of stuff. They, they buy something or whatever, whatever. They just don't do the thing, right? So I buy that. I, I started off with like Facebook ads as a service to like local businesses. Um, I ended up, I worked with like a med spa. I worked with a club. I worked with a guy at, at a club and he was my client for like, dude, my, he was my client for like three years, like a wow. really, really long time. All I was doing was just every single weekend he had some drink promo and then I would, I would make ads for the drink promo and then like get people's phone numbers and emails and then like text them reminders to come get the drink promo. It was super simple. Um, but in hindsight, what you realize is he was he was what I would consider like a, like a dream client. And they pop up about one out of every 10 to 15. And what I mean by that, it was it, it was basically impossible for me to quantify the return to him. But he was okay with that, just him specifically, because he was the kind of dude he was just like, whatever. He owned a shit ton of businesses and dude was just wealthy. And he liked me too because he saw I was a young kid and he, he, he probably looked at me as if I was him and he just kind of wanted to like support me. And that's probably a reason why he stayed with me. And that, that does not happen a lot. Yeah. So like, I, because I couldn't directly quantify a return, I'd get other clients and they just churn because it was, it was impossible for me. Like I just didn't conceptually understand this at first or if somebody's paying you money, like a B2B service. So for anyone who doesn't know what that means, like B2B means I'm selling you a service where I'm going to advertise for your business. You need to get a return in order to, to rationalize the reason why you're paying me to execute the service. So I wasn't able to do that for other people. And he was essentially like financing 
just because he like didn't give a shit. Yeah. Like that was it. Um, and then I started just just I'm still like in the arena. I'm 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 reading Russell Brunson stuff. I'm I'm buying other people's courses. I bought so many courses, dude. But the difference between me and other people is they buy courses and just like, never go through the course. I would buy a course and just immediately go through it, like instantaneously. Yeah. So like not go to bed until you like watch through all of yeah, it. Yeah, like there's no like why did I buy this if I'm not yeah. gonna like do it, right? Yeah. So I bought one. It was it was about using automation, follow unfollow to grow Instagram accounts. This is back when this worked. There was a period yeah. of time, like it obviously doesn't work now, but there was a period of time where if you executed follow unfollow on Instagram, you got a shit ton of followers and it worked. Yeah. It worked like really, really well. So I started selling that as a service. Um, I saw some other guys doing it, like because I'm, I was reading Russell Brunson stuff. It's like, oh, funnel hacking, just copy what's already working. So I'm like, all right, I'll copy what's right. And that doesn't mean copy people precisely. It means like copy like the idea behind it. I'm not telling to like rip off people's landing pages or like their precise offer. Like don't do that. Yeah. Um, but the concept was that they were helping people get Instagram followers. So I thought I'd be smart and I'd say, I'd say, let me, let me, let me change the outcome for people, I'm not going to get you followers on Instagram. I'm going to get you more money on Instagram. I'm going to help you make more sales on Instagram. So I go through this whole long sequence of people. If there's a business account on Instagram, a, a very large percent of them will have this button on their profile that says email. And if you click the email button, it gives you their email, right? So I was like, I didn't have like a business page per se. It was like my personal page. So I was like, I don't want to reach out directly through Instagram like that. Cause there's no symmetry. However, I have a landing page. And if I email them and like send them the link to the landing page, then they can get the context as to like, actually, yeah, yes, this is business. So that's what I was doing. I, I figured I'd do email instead. So I would go through profiles. I picked a, I picked a random niche, just a random niche. I picked fitness coaches cause there were so many of them. It was really easy to find them. Picked it, started going through the profiles, manually clicking the email button, copying it, pasting it in a Google sheet, and then just doing this for like two hours a day, like every single day. Every single day I did this for weeks, weeks, over and over and over and over again. And then I would just make tests of like, what's the best thing to say? And I was doing this for months. And this is originally how I got good at cold email. Cause there was just so much exposure and a lot of times what, what happens with people if they're sending cold emails is they'll spin it up in an automation tool this is when like how automation tools didn't even exist yet there was like a couple and that was it and i wasn't even aware of them um but a lot of people when they do cold email they'll spin up and spin it up on an automation tool but what that what that does if you do that it kind of removes the sentience from it like you don't feel it when you send the email, mm. yeah, I went through months of my life where I was like handwriting, like uh, I would copy it, put it in the Gmail tab and like click send where now what was happening when you were doing this is my conception of it was I'm speaking to one individual human for mm. every single time I do this. Now what people do is they get these automation tools, they put a thousand emails in there they're thinking that they're speaking to a thousand people at once. I and that's how they frame their conversation. Yeah, that's how they frame the conversation. So, yeah. what? So my context as it evolved with cold email over time, always from always was from the fundamental standpoint where I am emailing one individual human, and if I'm going to automate this, I have to write the email to one individual human and kind of backtrack it to be able to automatically send to a thousand people. What other people do is they just automatically go, I'm speaking to a thousand people. This is why I got so good at it really fast. So what happened with this is I was promoting that, the, the Instagram offer saying, I'll make you more money. And it kind of just like wasn't hitting. And I was like, dude, what is wrong with this? Like, I know these guys over here, they're running this business. They have like a ton of clients. They're getting like hella clients. Like, why is this not working? And I'm like, well, let me change like what I'm selling. And this is, I'm starting to go into like the offer. Like what's the value proposition? Like I'm saying make more money, but when you really actually pay attention and I'm looking at the people I'm sending to, I'm like, 
half of these people don't even sell products. So I just said, I just started framing it as, hey, I can get you more followers as the value proposition instead. Bro, immediately, it started cooking. Immediately. I feel like that's like a lot of like fitness coaches as well. Like um, with that niche specifically, right? It's not like the make money online type of niche. So when, you know, you're a fitness coach and it's like, oh, more followers or more money. Like, you know, fitness coaches, I feel like it's more of like a status thing. So Yeah, I mean, if they had a product it would have made more sense mm -hmm. to tell them like, hey, I'll help you sell more of your product. But just like 90% of them didn't have a product. So now this goes into like me understanding relevance of different people want different things. So if I segmented it, whereas like these people don't have a product, these people do have a product and offered a different value proposition to each of these people, it would have been more efficient for all of them. You see what I mean? So I started offering them more followers. And at this point, I'm 20 years old. And I'm 25 right now. But at this point, running this business, I'm 20 years old. And I get it to the peak. It was about like $12,000 a month. And my costs were, bro, I was spending like maybe $400 a month. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, dude, this is an insane amount of money. I This is enough to not have to work a job. And it, it just keeps growing. It just keeps going and going and going and going. And I'm like, dude, I think I can like legitimately take this to like $100,000 a month. Like I'm, I'm pretty confident I can do this because my clients were staying. Mm -hmm. They kept renewing over. So I was stacking MRR because yeah. I was getting the result. And mm -hmm. this is like my first exposure to that kind of thing. Because remember earlier, I was talking about like the Facebook ads thing and everyone was churning because like I couldn't quantify results. But this was the first time where it was so clearly direct that working with me is giving you results. You see it immediately and you continue renewing because you want it to keep happening. So I had all these clients getting them over and over. Bro, it, uh, I think I'm, I think it was maybe like 5% churned a month like that. It was, wow. Bro, they stayed, they stayed so long. Yeah. And this is when I fully start experience, experiencing this because I'd be like, I'd start the month and be like, okay, well, I know for an absolute baseline if i didn't even get more people this month i'm gonna make twelve thousand. like i just know that's gonna happen and every acquired new customer is just going on top of that so i'm like wow dude this is like crazy efficient like what was what, what was the output that you had to do in order to like fulfill for dude, this it, it was literally like an automation tool and like once a week i had to go in for each client and just put in a new target it took like 10 minutes for each for each person. solid yeah it was so fast it was it was legitimately probably like four or five hours of work a week it was and the rest of the time was just acquiring people yeah so obviously when you experience that you're like wow i can i can really scale this to 100k because it wasn't like you were like um you know when you're talking about follow on follow like you were going into all those pages and follow on following like all day it was long it's automatic yeah yeah and what this what this also did is it exposed me to what really i like about business. Mm -hmm. I like the acquiring of customers. I like the marketing side. I really, really enjoy that a lot. I don't really like the operational side. So we can kind of get into this later in the conversation about like the symmetry between Andre and I and client ascension. Um, but I'm, I'm the acquisition. I like getting them. And then also like, I understand like user experience or like customer experience and keeping people longer because that is marketing and that goes into like more of like an economic analysis of a business but that's that's actually more important as you get larger and larger and larger as opposed to acquiring new customers getting new customers gets boring at a certain point it's it's you'd rather just keep the ones you have because yeah. it's it's a puzzle and when you saw not a lot of people on the planet are able to solve that puzzle if you were able to solve that puzzle of keeping your clients for a very long time it is impossible to not get rich it's impossible to not become wealthy it's a superpower and this is this is what a, like what a lot a lot of people don't understand and i i kind of hit on this in my content a lot where i'm telling people i'm like if you I take all these lessons I learned over time, because I was able to compare it, I had a business where people churned, and then I had a business, another business where people stayed, and then I had many other businesses after that, and all of it was structured to be in such a fashion to where they would stay. You see what I mean? And that's what I have now with client ascension. Like these, they, they stay, because I took all the lessons from everything else I did and injected it into that, and 
it's it's so crazy to me when I see people, they can be, people can flux like, oh, just hit a 400K month or just hit a 500K month or something like that. And it's like, yeah, but you sold like a, like a one-time thing with no like kind of can like a continue continuation where people like want to stay with you and you're not really like stacking up recurring revenue yeah. and the art of uh, uh, doing that bro it's it's impossible to lose money when you know how to do that yeah. it's, it's i was i was a part of a company where um it was like that's like oh wow we just had our biggest month and then like the next month was you know maybe half that because it wasn't stacking it was like a single product it was a sale it was black friday so like that really pushed that um but you know i think something with client ascension like you guys have is it's like you're pushing people into client ascension and you're just building this extremely sturdy, solid foundation of results. Like I pretty sure every single time I log into Twitter, I see results from client ascension and you know, obviously that's intentional. That's on purpose. And, um, it's real because like people are getting results and you are pushing those out and that just creates a stronger and stronger foundation to just continue to build on. And that's like, you're stacking, um, you know, progress with client ascension, which has been really cool to watch. Yeah, dude. I mean, if like we signed not nine customers, we signed nine customers just yesterday crazy simultaneously we are doing like at this moment because we've been like heavily like it's been a period of really working in customer experience and making sure people get results simultaneously as we have signed nine clients in a single day and we will probably have an all-time high month this month we've spent less on ads and done less output of marketing this month but this month will probably be the all-time high month, specifically because there's so many people renewing and staying. It's mm. stacking because they just stay. So this is what people kind of don't understand. I'll see people and they'll go, yo, look at this. Just had a 400K month. And I'm like, yeah, but like, can you sustain a 400K month? forever like for a really 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 long time like are you functionally capable of operating something like that because every new customer you get is a chance to produce a case study this is what your every single like a service business like a marketing agency or any kind of like consulting type thing any kind of service business if it's like b2b like kind of like make more money or get more followers or what or subscribers or whatever anything like that Every, your, the entirety of your business is this one functional system of acquire customer, get case study, use the case study to acquire more customers, turn them into a case study, use that to get more customers. It is this continuously oscillating cycle over and over and over again. So get a customer, get them results. Use those quantifiable results to acquire more customers. It's just this flywheel continuously over and over and over and over again. And if you can't, predictably and repeatedly take someone and put them into this system you have developed and have them exit it with a very clear working of, of a quantifiable result. If you can't do that, I promise you will never grow a successful company. And it's, it's really crazy to me that like even just this past week, I was like, I've read Alex Hermosi's book, hundred million dollar offers. I've watched all of his YouTube videos, probably every single one. And he's been doing it for like a year and a half, two years now. He's been posting YouTube videos, I think for two years. And I remember watching his YouTube videos like a year and a half ago and thinking like, yo, this is like really smart. Like this is really, really smart. And just this last week I was going back and looking at some of the really old ones. And it's almost as if like, I just completely forgot what he said and I'm watching it again now and it hyper applies to me. And I'm like, yeah, like I literally heard this before and it probably subconsciously implanted in my head. And like, I started just operating in that fashion. But when I go back and it like re-inject it consciously, it's like, oh yes, here's the precise action item I need to do. And you're also right at a different point when you're watching it initially. So now you yeah. go back, it's like, okay, well, X, Y, and Z has happened. It's been, you know, five, six months, whatever. And, you know, things have changed. Months have gotten bigger. There have been more clients. The team is bigger. So it's like now there's more that you have to kind of fulfill in in that department. And so when you see something like that, you know, 
you revisit it and a bunch of new things jump out at you and you're like, oh, like I should be doing that. You know, I can learn from that and implement that right away. Yeah. I think, um, I think something else I've been thinking about lately, and I was talking about this on client ascension consulting calls on um, this, this happens with a lot of people. Um, say you're running like a marketing agency or any kind of like service business. What happens is, say, and I'm assuming you're below like 30,000 a month. Like if you're running a marketing agency or B2B service company and you're between like 5,000 to $30,000 per month, what kind of happens here is you will hear a lot of conflicting information. For instance, what you will hear is you need one offer and you need to scale that one offer on one channel to like a million a month. And while yes, this is true, but you can only do that if there is like, if it's, if it, if the offer is exactly what people want in the form that they want it. So what I'll see people do a lot is they'll, they'll get stuck around like 20 or something like that. And the reason why is because they have some fixed offer where they're like, we do this. This is how much we charge. And this is the way we fulfill it. Like this is, this is how we do it. Like you have, and they talk to prospects and they try to push all those prospects into this one like box. But the problem with it is that the box that they created was not created based off of the feedback of what people actually want. So like I can give you a, for instance of this with people who run, um, advertising agencies, this happens all the time. And I tell people, if you're going to sell to cold traffic, it has to be like what they want to buy. Like it has to speak directly to them precisely what they're thinking of right now. And what a lot of advertising agencies will do, I'll take a, like you're, you're, you're making ads and running ads for, for e-com brands. What everyone wants to do is, oh, the client gives me all of the creatives and then I just media buy and you pay me a shit ton of money to do that. But the problem with that is twofold and that they don't know how to make creatives. Like they want you to make the creatives. Like they don't want to hire an advertising agency that doesn't make advertisements. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Because like you need they're not paying a media buyer, they're paying yeah. an advertising agency. Yeah. You need a creative to run ads. And now they're saying, well, all, uh, what people say then is, oh, I'll just work with clients who like already have good creatives. It's like, well, then how, how do the client get the good creative? It's probably because they're working with an advertising agency who makes them creatives. And now you're trying to scalp a client from another advertising agency that does make the creatives with your offer that doesn't make the creatives. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make any sense. It, it makes zero sense at all. And now what happens is say you do by happenstance are able to get some client who has some amount of assets or something like that. And you're able to use them in ads. What happens is typically your client is not going to be a professional advertiser. So they don't have the understanding of what kind of creative needs to be produced. So you arise into a situation where your client can't get results because their creative sucks. And it's like the success of advertising is 80% everything to do with the creative, like making actual good ads, right? And this applies to other offers. And this is just an example that I'm using as an advertising agency. What I tell people is if you're going to try to sell ads as a service using outbound, like cold email, you need to have a full encapsulating offer. And say you do 3000 a month plus like 10% of gross profit. And that that's where your offer is. What will happen is some people will be like, well, we don't, we, I, I, I don't know if we want to like have someone like run the ads for us. Can you just give us the creatives? And then you can just say, yeah, like I can make you this much creatives for this much. Congratulations. You made a sale based off of what that one particular person wanted. And this is why I see every single person I see who is one good at making creatives and then two creates a business selling ad creatives. It works really, really well. And this is exactly what happened with one of my clients, Scott, he was selling like explainer videos to software companies. And it like, just wasn't really hitting right. And I was like, Scott, you're doing, you're doing this wrong. 
you're trying to sell like explainer videos, but it's just like dumb. Like no one really wants like an explainer video. However, a software company that wants to advertise needs advertisements. They need creatives. And if you're pitching people that you'll make them ad creatives, you're hitting the kind of people who have money because they're going, the, the, the context is that they're going to spend money on ads if they're buying ad creative. So they just have money. You see what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's kind of stuff like this that you, that you have to look deep into and like extract some nuance from it. So it's like, that makes logical sense why you would sell to sell people ad creatives. Cause the kind of person that buys ad creatives is the kind of person who spends money on ads. If they spend money on ads, they have money. Like it's very simple. Yeah. I think uh, another thing too, and you know, I've kind of, I've learned this is just when on the phone, like on a sales call and, uh, you know, creating a product that's relatively new, uh, sometimes, you know, the, the person on the call be like, Oh, like, well, do you offer this? And then you think about it for a second. You're like, okay, like we don't offer that, but I know that this would be a key piece in closing this person. And it's, you know, that's actually a great thing that we could add to our, you know, our, our system right now. And so you think about it for a second, you're like, yeah, you know, like we do offer that and, you know, you implement it right after that call. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, like you said, people just get stuck in creating that box where it's like, oh, like, no, we don't offer that. This is, you know, this is what we do. And it's like, ultimately the customer has a problem and it's your job to solve the problem. So it's like every problem is going to be slightly different, right? But when you say, for example, with an advertising agency, when the problem is not enough traffic, like, okay, yeah, the, 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 the common problem is, you know, not enough traffic, but, you know, each client is going to have its individual needs. Oh, like, you know, we would love to do this, but we need you to come fly out and shoot ads with us. Okay. You know, we can make that work or, oh, like, you know, we would love to do this, but we need some like special effects on the ads. Like, do you do that? And it's like, well, if it's not initially in your package, like, yeah, just figure out, like, just add it. Like, obviously if it Mm -hmm. makes sense. So it's just like, you might have to tailor things specifically for specific people and just like being open to that because every person is a unique person with unique problems. Yeah. So this is, this, this is kind of what I was trying to get at. It's like, if you're below like 30 K a month, what you need to do is like, you'll be on these calls with people and just in sales conversations, whether that's on the phone or whether that's in the DMS or whether that's in like comments somewhere, like people are going to ask you, you will find that the, the target market starts to ask you for things in a specific form. So if you find a lot of people are not wanting a media buyer and they just want ad creatives, it kind of makes logical sense to sell them ad creatives because you can't just make this random box that fits you nicely. Where it's like, I want to sell this. It doesn't work like that. You can only sell people what they want in the form that they want it. But then with you, like with Client Ascension, right, it's something that's more established and it's like you've built something based on all the people in your program. So it's like you have this like persona of person that you're targeting and looking for. And so it's like this person comes to your program and they're like, X, Y, Z, yeah, like I want that, I want that, I want, okay, yeah, I'm interested. And and then they're joining because because they want to be in that box, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, this is the box, do you want to be in the box or not? Whereas like when you're below that 30K a month, it's like, you know, you don't have that box. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't just that, make a that, box out of thin that's air. That's what I'm saying. People make a box out of thin air. It's just like my box, you have to, you make your box over time. And it is only when you have created the box, like after speaking to people, like you need, you need to implement what people are asking for. So it's like client ascension over a very long period of time has gone through many different forms. We start adding done for you components. We add like one-on-one calls, a lot of stuff here. We got this, we have, we, we have this segment over here, this over here, this, 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 this. It, it evolves over time because you need to give people specifically what they're asking for. And this applies to any single kind of business. And something I can note is say, for instance, I'll use this as another example, like the, the same example as before the advertising AG, where you might be like, well, like if, if I have the box where I just like pay, pay, get paid to run the ads and do the media buying and I don't have to do the creatives. It's going to cost me like a lot of money to make the creatives and like a lot of time to do that to which my response to you would be, well, what if I give you $10,000? Yeah. And then you'd be like, oh, well, yeah, then it can work. Then like, Okay. Well then tell that to the prospect. You happen to get on the phone with someone who's like, yeah, we want to spend like a hundred thousand dollars per month on ads, right? They're like a, like a very large business. 
And what would happen is you'd backtrack this and be like, okay, well, if you want to spend like a hundred grand in ads, you're probably going to need like, you're going to need somewhere like 40, 50 new creatives every single month. So we're going to need to have to, we're going to have to do this. We're going to have to buy your product. We're going to have to get like models and, and, and shoot here. We're going to have to like find creators and make UGC ads and this many UGC ads. And here's the plan. And it'll, it'll segment out like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. And here's the whole point of how that creative system would work like that. And now what you're doing is if you're on a call with someone and you're explaining this to them, well, if you want to spend this much money on ads, this is required. This much volume is required. And here is how this volume needs to be executed. This is the precise roadmap with which it needs to happen. And then you explain how actually extensive this really is. And now prospect is looking at this and they're saying, oh yeah, that's like a lot of work. Can you do that for me? And you're like, oh yeah. So like all this would be, would be $8,000 for every month to produce, for, to produce this much amount. And now they're sitting here and if they're an actually sizable company, they'll be like, oh yeah. So like I would either have to like go do all this myself or hire a full-time person to go do this. But then like, I need to train the person to know how to do all of this correctly, but you have this experience and you know how this works already. So like, yeah, this actually just makes sense to give you $8,000 per month plus like a performance based off for, for you to actually profit off it. Exactly. See what I mean? And, and like with that too, it's, you know, uh, again, like you're, you're tailoring based on the person. I know for us, like we have a short form content agency, right? Not everyone wants the exact same package. Like we don't have a box and we're probably not going to get to a point where we have a box either. Right. Okay. Yeah. We have a package. Look, this is like, you know, if you're interested, this is what we have. But, you know, for some people, it's like, oh, we need to shoot in person. Oh, like we have podcasts. We need to send you those podcasts. Oh, we have YouTube videos. We need that. Oh, like we have to shoot stuff over like basically like Zoom. And it's like, it's different for every single person. And then it's like, oh, well, we want one clip a day. Oh, we want two. We want three. Okay, that's different. Oh, we, we only want to post on this platform. Oh, we want to post on all three. So it's like, okay, you know, there's, there's no box for us. You know, it's every single client is different. We're just accommodating so yeah. it's like we can accommodate those needs so, so this is what i tell people a lot i go if you're if you're running kind of like a business like yours like a, around that size your sales process will be dirty what i mean by dirty is an example is taking someone who say you're pitching somebody i don't know seo and you go and you analyze their site and you you're like, all right, well, for you to get for you to get more customers, you'd want to rank on this keyword, this one, this one, this one, this one. Um, these keywords are super competitive though, so you'd have to like get this many backlinks and this much content. It would probably take this amount of time. And then this one over here would be this much, this much, this much, this much. And then you're explaining this to them. And what you do is you assess the difficulty of what is required for them to win and then backtrack that. What do you want to be compensated to execute that difficulty? Correct. This is what people don't understand because they have the one box where it's like, oh no, I just like, I'm an SEO agency. I'm going to write you five pieces of content. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get you 10 backlinks a month. That's it. I'm going to fit you in this box. And it's like, no, like what is required for you to win specifically? explain it to them, explain all of the nuance that would need to happen and then present them a price that makes economic viable sense for you. Exactly. Like what's worth your time. I think a lot of people too, is like when they get started, they're, you know, and, and you have to do this when you get started, they're afraid to like lose a deal. So like they're afraid to like, you know, put a price on like their full worth, you know, but for us, you know, obviously like you guys, it's, it's completely different too. You know, we've gotten to the point where it's like, okay, you know, we've done this enough times where it's like, we know like how much work this actually takes based on what they're saying. So, you know, someone gets on the call, it's like, yeah, like that's going to be, you know, six grand a month. And it's like, oh, well, like that's too much. It's like, sorry, like, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, you know, it's yeah. not, not easy to, you know, film, edit and post three videos a day on three different platforms. Like, you know, it's nine videos going out every single day, you know, what that's like, 270 videos a month so it's like sorry like we can't just do that for you know pennies on the dollar and yeah. like you get an understanding of that work once you start doing it so then when people get on the phone it's like man like it has to be this number or i just like it just doesn't make sense i feel like what screws a lot of people up is they'll they'll say they're they're getting on sales calls and maybe they're like they're like oh i'm not like really good at sales i'm like super nervous to get on this call um and it screws a lot of people up and 
what you should do instead, it, if you were to phase out like the sections of a sales call, like one of them is discovery. And what you're doing in discovery, don't think of it as like a mechanized thing in the beginning. Just kind of like ask them, like, what do you want to, what would be your ideal outcome for working with me? Like, what do you want to happen? It's like, oh, you're selling, you're selling uh, e-commerce email marketing. You use Clavio to write them emails or whatever. Say they currently make like 10K a month, like 15% of their sales come from, from, from email. They're like, oh, we'd really like to get up to around like 25%, 30%, um, maybe do like 20 grand a month um, on email. And then now you, now you know what they want. And then you go and you look and see what they have. It's like, okay, well, like, can, like, let me audit it real quick. Let me see what you have. And then you go, like, how many flows do they have? How many automations over here? How many emails are they sending a week? And you tell them, like, oh, so what would be required for you to get to that number is this. We'd have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this, 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 this. And then you want to send about three emails a week over here. Um, and but coming up with those ideas for the emails, you don't want to just constantly push like discounts or whatnot because that's going to discount your brand. So you need to come up with like creative angles to promote things and then um, present upsells for people based on something else that they, that they bought. And, they, and you start giving them like an action plan. And like if you did all this, it 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 would be reasonable that you should hit this number. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, how much does it cost? Let's say you're fixed. Let's go. It'd be be three thousand dollars a month. And maybe they say something like. Oh, I mean, like, uh, I mean, like, we have product costs, and like, it, it costs a lot of money, or like, yada yada yada, or whatever. But you just gave them this action plan, and if you're confident that you could, like, if you do all of this, like, you a hundred percent should be able to get to this, then you could like counter offer, because they might be worried about like you can't actually get the results, so they want a form of risk reversal. So you could either one give them a guarantee. Well, if I can't get it to this number in this X amount of days, I can just like refund you. Um, or you could do it based off of how about we do a performance fee based off the increase from your baseline. So you're doing about 10 K a month right now. I think I can get you about 20, 25 K a month. So what if we did 15% of the increase or something like that? You see what I mean? Yeah. And then you just, and it, it's, you have them for a really long time. You're sending emails and you know, you write an email and then over time their stuff grows a lot. And you could scale it down as like they, if they grow like super massive or it's like, you send an email to make it 50 grand, they're probably going to be not, not too happy giving you like 4,000 for a single email. That's what I, um, that's what I did with, um, you know, the, actually when I first like kind of got into things, right. So when I, when I started out, I was at a dealership. I was like the videographer of the dealership. I didn't really know what I was doing. They didn't really know what they wanted. You know, all their stuff was just like iPhone stuff. So it's like anything that I made was better than what they had. Um, so that was like a, a starting off point for me. And then I went and worked with like a startup, you know, like a, a personal brand type thing. And, um, I didn't really know what I was offering, but I knew, or like, not that I didn't know what I was offering. I knew I was going to be like a videographer and like make content, but I didn't know like to what degree that really looked like. So I was like, okay, well I know that, um, you know, this is going to help drive revenue. So what I want to do is I want to structure myself and be like, you know, at the time I was like 18. So I was like, I'll charge 2k a month. Right. And that was like a significant amount of money for me as a, you know, 17, 18 year old kid. Um, cause I had like some other clients at like that level as well. And then I, I said, I was like, okay, whatever your highest month is in revenue, anything that we scale past that, um, I'll take 25% of. And so the dude was like, oh yeah, that's cool. And so that, you know, 2k retainer, turned into $13,000 one month later because, you know, we just blew past that. And so you do something like that performance fee, you know, people, they kind of lower their guard a little bit because they're like, oh, like that's not that much. Um, obviously you want to make sure you have a contract in place um, and you want to make sure that's sustainable. But with that, you know, usually they're more than happy to get it because the, you know, they're getting the result, right? You're getting paid because they are making more money, which is ideal. Yeah. So something, something else to note is there's, there's sometimes a psychological aspect to this. And the, the best way I can explain it is how I buy services and what I recommend my clients do. So I'm going to use an example, Eddie and Brady, who are, they do TikTok ads and like TikTok organic stuff. And they're helping me with TikTok ads. So like their offers, they'll, it's like a, it's like a fixed amount plus a, a percent of gross revenue. So it's uh, revenue minus ad spend. 
But I told them, I don't want you to manage my ads. I want you to script my ads and I want you to edit my ads because I want to know what's happening in the ads manager. I want to be the person who knows how to do it. I want to like post the ad. I want to like individually me. I want to see the direct result of it. So how about I could just pay you like a consulting amount or like a fixed amount for like the ad creation. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we can do that. So now I turned into a consulting deal for them, which you can do. It's just sometimes it's not. So like, say for instance, that they said, that they said, um, no, sorry, you don't fit into our, 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 our box, box here. But like, all right, well, that's stupid. Like, yeah. Why not? Like I'm Lost, trying, like I'm a trying, great potential case study. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to pay you money. Like, and like, I'm relatively big and like have a big force behind me on Twitter. So if I have a, if you have a case study with me where it's like, then, and they understood this, they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're like a pretty sizable person here. If I can get you like, they didn't try to force me into this box. I didn't want to be in. They just said, okay, yeah, yeah, we can do that. It was an advantageous setup for them. And this is what people do. They screw this up when they talk to a prospect. And they're just like, oh, no, sorry, we only do this. And it's like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, like, like we, we literally had one dude. He, like, I'm in Miami, and he's, like, in Brickell. So he's, like, 15 minutes away um, by car. And, um, like, he literally got on, on the phone with us, and he was like, yeah, so like I just want to record a bunch of videos and I'm completely cool if we only post one. Like I just want to record a bunch of videos to see like the quality of all those videos and like I literally just like want you guys like in the room so you can like kind of coach me through it and like, you know, for the energy. I was like sounds good to me. Like yeah. that's dope. Like, you know, I'm I'm super happy to set up all my gear and like help make some some cool videos for you um and and do that. So it's like it, it just I think for us, like it's kind of gotten down to, it's like, okay, like we have clients and it's like, we have a potential client. It's like, do we want to work with that person or do we not want to work with that person? And it's like, if we don't want to work with that person, um, but they're willing to pay well, then it's like, okay, like, do we want to make this exception? Do we not? Um, if they're going to be a pain, like probably just not want to work with them. Or if it's someone like, you know, recently I just signed a client that I've been uh, wanting to work with for like a couple of years. So, you know, with that, I was literally... Like I went and I shot a podcast with him um, and I was like, it was really tough to do that because he's like a really big and in, in his space. And so, and I'm like not super huge in like the similar space. So, but I knew him from the past like company that I was with and um, I finally got like a, a, to do a podcast with him. I was like, yo, like I'll literally shoot a podcast for you. I'll edit all the clips and I'll send you the clips so that you have. And so you know, he made the time I shot the podcast with him. And then every single day I sent him a clip until he signed with us. Yep. And, um, it took two weeks of sending him a clip every single day before he signed with us. And it, there's two lessons in that one, the clips were good clips. They were performing really well on a social, right? He has an existing following, but you know, some of the clips got like over hundred K views, which relative to his other stuff was, you know, an increase. So that was good. Um, and then just like the consistency of just sending him a clip every day. Hey, here's another clip. Hey, here's another clip. And then, you know, they kind of get used to it. They're like, Oh, this is nice. You know, like I get a clip and I get to post the clip and then the, the clip gets views. And, um, you know, obviously that just like lowers, all like the, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the, the barrier of entry. And, um, they're just like, Oh, you know, this, this is what I want. So obviously you don't want to do that for everyone. Like we have to be very picky about who we do that with. Cause some people will take advantage. Like you have to know the person. Um, like I know like his morals and like where he stands with things. So, you know, that played into the decision of, you know, deciding to do that. But I think a lot of people are just unwilling to to kind of take that route of, you know, for me, it's like, I really want to work with his client. So like if I have to work with him for free for three months before I get there, like, you know, I'm down. So, yeah. So this, this is the people, people underestimate the amount of work and the frequency with which like high, high value clients show up. Typically you get most of your like high value clients through extraneous effort like that or like you are connected to them in some form of network if, if it's outbound and this was both yeah it, it, it was both but if you're if you're doing like outbound 
and you're going for high value prospects, I mean, they make millions of dollars a year and you're going to try to sell them like a $10,000 per month plus thing. It takes a lot of effort to do that. And now something to, I see this all the time. I'll have clients and they, um, it, it goes back to that box thing where they try to fit them in this, this random box. And what'll happen is people will, if you don't get a ton of call volume, it's super easy to get discouraged because I could give you math on my end and stats from my end. 40% of people that submit an application to client ascension just make $0. It's like, no, I'm not working with you. So 40% of the people come through just are 100% not qualified. And then there's about four and a half percent of applications that make a hundred thousand dollars per month plus. You're saying this is after they've gone through the program or when they come to the program? No, when they submit their initial gotcha. application as like an inquiry to mm -hmm. like schedule a sales call with us. And a lot of people who who are in the hundred thousand dollar per month plus, not a lot of the client ascension isn't really made for them. It's made for people who are somewhere in the range of like three to four thousand to like fifty thousand a month, like around there. Mm -hmm. That's who it's made for. It was specifically designed for that section of the market. But there's these two other ends that aren't hit. But what people would do is say they're selling a like a I don't know, their thing is three thousand, four thousand dollars per month. What their ideal section when you're selling a done for you service your ideal section is that they're making somewhere like to 30,000 to 100,000 but what this does with a lot of people is it's leaving out that other section of like 5 to 29 yeah and they'll get on calls with these prospects and they'll just be like no you don't fit in my box buy and it's like no sell them some kind of like just form of deliverable where it's like say your e-commerce email marketing say all right say you're not going to go like continuously run all of their email campaigns on a on a on a you could sell them a flow build out you could design like a one-time thing and just get some kind of revenue from them like yeah and build that connection that. Extract from the market, like that section, sell them what they would buy. No one hops on the phone with you if they don't want to purchase something to make more money in the form that makes sense for them. For sure. And, you know, with that, it's like, yeah, you have those people on the low end, you have those people on the high end. And, you know, it's not just, yes, like there's revenue there, absolutely. But it's also like if you sell them something now, like you're building that connection with them. So, you know, it, say it's a little guy, right? Say he's doing 2K a month, you know, okay. You know, it's something that's, you know, okay, you, you give him something that helps his business grow. Now his business grows 10X, now he's at 20K a month. Well, now he's a fit for client ascension. Yep. And now, yep. you know, he had a good experience with you in the past. So him coming back and being like, oh, I want your product. It's like that sales call is just gonna be a breeze yep. because yep. you already have that touch point, like mm -hmm. a big touch point. Yep, that's how it works. That That is that is, that is is exactly how it works. Uh, people, people, people make decisions when you are kind of, this happens a lot with like younger people. Um, maybe you haven't been in business. I've been like full-time entrepreneur for I think like five years now. But if you're like just starting to get into this, maybe you're less than a year in or like less than two years in, the kinds of decisions you make, what, you're, what they're doing is they're not planning for what would happen in two years, three years, five years from now. Everything they're doing is with the context of like, how can I make more money right now or like in like two or three months? So you're looking at something like, oh, I'm not going to like spin up an offer where I just like sell them the, the the flows or whatever like that. They're not operating under the context that that, that person could become a really good client a year from now. And the reason they don't do that is because they haven't even existed for a year they don't think in those time horizons yeah. people think oh i don't even know if i'll be in this business a year from now and if you continuously think to yourself and make decisions based off the context of i don't know if i'll be in this business a year from now you just won't be in business a year from now mm -hmm. you everything you do needs to be under the context and intention that you're going to be doing this for at minimum three years like minimum 
three years. Playing and, the long game. Yeah, and even then when you first start, it's like, dude, it might be like six months till you get your first client. Like, so some people can go faster if they're like, if they're just like gung-ho, like, yeah, I'm just going to offer people. I see this so much, bro. People will get people will get on sales calls and they'll get on like 10 sales calls in a row. And they just like ask the prospect the, 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 their, their revenue. It was like, and they put this number in there. Well, I only work with people at this at, at this level. And the prospect will say the revenue, but oh, sorry, I don't think we'll be a fit. And it's like, well, like they actually could have. Like you, you operated no discovery process. You didn't find out what are their problems right now. You don't know how much money they have saved in their bank account. You don't know yeah. like how much risk they're willing to take to get this to go. They just like automatic DQ people and just tell them to fuck off. And it's like, bro, are you, that that's not what you do more specifically for a very important reason and that you need to like talk to them to get market research because you start doing this continuously over and over and over and over you're talking to all different kinds of people in one industry across all different revenue levels and all different kinds of situations and you start to understand what is my target market more specifically what are their emotions and exact syntax they use to convey information to me and you find out what they're thinking you find out what they want and that allows you to morph your box into something that is cohesive and it hits a large section of people that exist in the market people just auto dq people oh sorry you're too big by bro are you out of your mind like no you have someone in your market on the phone right now like Find out what they want, like really dig deep and try to figure out like what's happening here. You do this. So you do this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times. It's like, dude, you can just recite what they want. Exactly. And what that means is you can, you can write a cold email that recites what they want. You can, you can figure out what their problems are and you figure out how to solve them. And it's like, now when you're speaking to them, you're speaking to them in a way where it's like, I'm a solution. You know, and, you know, that's something that, you know, I've noticed as well as like just like in being on sales calls and this isn't for like content business, but, um, you know, for uh, my trading stuff, it's like you get on calls and it's like after you talk to enough people and after you get to know yourself enough, it's like you start to realize what the common problems are and what people want to hear. And I, I think there's a dark side to that, right? Because it's like, yes, you want to be able to know what their problem is and understand like how to fix it and speak to them in terms of like this, I'm going to be the solution, but there also has to be fulfillment to back that up because a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll have just the marketing piece where it's like they learn how to speak to these people and tell them exactly what they want to hear. And then when it comes time to fulfill, there's just nothing there or it's just subpar. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about that because you know, that's something that you said you are a marketer and you know, that's what you enjoy. And if you could just talk about like your partnership with Andre and how, you know, the fulfillment and the marketing kind of works with that. Yeah. So uh, Andre Heichel and then Christian Bonnier, Dan Crowley, they're my business partners in, in client ascension. And, um, you can kind of segment it out. Um, assume, almost every kind of business, I guess in like my range and most of the people that people watching this video are selling to is it can kind of be delineated into three business segments where there's marketing and lead generation and there's sales, like the actual operation of the sales conversations and then fulfillment and operations behind it. So I lead, I guess you could say the marketing and lead gen. I am responsible for getting the people interested in client ascension and getting them on the phone and and, and building goodwill in the market. That's my job, I do that. Dan is in charge of the sales team and the sales team actually has the conversations with the prospects. They relay information to me. I relay information to them. What happens in fulfillment, I'm still in the operations. I still, I get on one-on-ones with people in client ascension. I'm very active in there. I run coaching calls inside client ascension. So I'm seeing what they're saying. I can take that information from what they're saying inside my actual active clients, use that in marketing, relay it to the sales team. And then Andre similarly can relay what problems people are having as well. Cause he's also in fulfillment. And then I can relay that back to marketing to generate more leads. You see what I mean? It's just sure. like passing of information back and forth. But something to note is that the, these segments of the business are 
each individual full-time 80 hour work week jobs. Like they really are. And like the way I can delineate this to you is with Andre, for instance, it's not just operating coaching calls inside client ascension and like responding to the clients. It's like hiring customer success managers and then making sure they know how to relay information to people. And then like making sure that they're doing a good job, like taking care of people and then making sure they're responsive to me and relaying information to me to which then I can go talk to the clients and make sure that they're getting results right and hiring people and managing the systems and like the tech behind it. That is a full call reviews and like just making checking up on everyone. That's a full time job. Yeah, I think like, like with that, you know, like each of those things is a full time job. And so, you know, but people don't when they see it, they don't necessarily understand what that really looks like. So you know, yeah, we're doing a podcast here, but like, this is working, you know, like this is in marketing, you're creating content for people to consume and build trust with people and then push them towards client ascension. So like this right now, it's like, you're technically on the clock, I guess you could say. Correct. The literal function of this podcast right now is to establish, to have you establish a parasocial relationship with me inquire in some fashion, maybe go watch more videos, maybe go to my Twitter, maybe you go opt into client ascension and now you're on my email list and you're seeing the email list and I'm giving you good information. Maybe it's something you can put into practice, you try it, maybe a couple months elapse and you're like, wow, this stuff that this guy talks about is actually like really good. And now that I like this guy and I've I've been exposed to the fact that he actually does know what he's talking about, I've seen the results he's got with other people, Screw it. I'm going to join Client Ascension. And then you get other kind of stuff where it's like, I literally have this sign back here that says Client Ascension. And you're just looking at that sign that says Client Ascension. It's just subconsciously implanting into you, like the name, like the naming behind it. I couldn't quantify that. Like, what's the return? What's the differential of return between us being on this podcast and that sign not being there versus the sign being there? What's the, what's the ROI? I don't know. Like you have to do stuff like that. Like, I don't know like how doing this podcast right now, like how many clients is that going to bring in? I don't know. Like I have no idea and I will never be able to measure it. All I know is that if you consistently do things like this over and over and over and over and over again, it is not one individual piece of content that produces results. It is the aggregate of a ton of content that was that people were exposed to in whatever sequence that they went through, that delivers conversions. It, that's how it works. It's not one cold email that gets the results. It's the one cold email and the follow-ups and then what they responded and then the, the, the personalized video you sent back and then they went to your landing page and you didn't even see that and they watched your video sales letter and they saw all your results over there and then you had a YouTube linked on it and they went and subscribed to you on YouTube and they watched two videos and then they thought about it for three weeks and they sent a link to someone in their Slack. And then a month later, some issue arises in the business and someone says, Hey, like, you remember that guy? Maybe he can help us with that. Like, Oh yeah, I do remember that guy. Like, yeah, wait, where is he? Like, what was his name again? Oh yeah. Let me scroll up. They find the YouTube link. Oh, he's over here. And then they, and then they click the YouTube link and then like they click the, the, the link to your website in, in the YouTube. And then they book a call through there. And then what you're thinking is that like, maybe you were doing UTM tracking on the thing. You say, Oh, YouTube got me a client, but actually it was the cold email. You see how this is aggregation bunch of touch points of shit everywhere scattered throughout the ether where it's like, you have no idea what exactly it is that delivers the results. All I know is that the more you do, the more it works. I think it really boils down to a big psychological game as well. Like, for example, that's just a huge touch point. Like, people are going to be staring at that, like, the whole video. Like, yeah, that neon. just becomes, <laughs> like, you know, ingrained in your brain, right? It just becomes a touch point. And then you see it somewhere else you're thinking about. It. I think what it really comes down to with, with personal brands, because um you know there's i I view businesses in like two types of ways uh, majorly right you have businesses like coca-cola they're like faceless apple faceless mostly faceless and then you have like personal brands like client ascension like client ascension is known for having your face behind it for having andre's face behind it right so it's known for a personal brand and so the more people um that you are reaching throughout the day uh that's maybe not the best way to say it but the more times that you're able to get in front of a single person in a given time and 
it also matters how you get in front of that them, mm-hmm. right? If you get in front of them as an authority, as someone that knows who they're talking about, as, you know, someone that's cool, someone that, you know, has the vibe versus, you know, an idiot or um, someone that's making a fool of himself online. Like, there's obviously different ways to do that, but it's like if you're doing that in multiple different ways, you're doing that on Twitter, you're doing that on YouTube, YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Andre's on Instagram, right? Uh, cold email. Uh, so you, you have all these different touch points. So it's like the more that you can get people to think about you throughout the day, the better because you know they're they're taking up mental bandwidth and they're thinking about they're thinking about it. So it's like oh like is client ascension going to help me? Is it not? Like even just them thinking about it is a step in progression versus like, am I going to play golf today? It's just, yeah, it's just occupying human bandwidth. That's, Correct. that's what all you're doing. Dude, I was listening to an interview with Grant Cardone and he goes, and I, I swear I've been thinking about this and he just put it so well, it's so simple. And right when I heard it, I was like, bro, it's so fucking true. What he says is your creative ad won't beat my frequency. And for anyone who doesn't know what frequency means, it's typically a measure of advertising where like you could take a seven days, like how many times did the average person see this ad in some X time period? That would be frequency. So what, what's my seven day frequency? If it's 14, it means the average person saw your ad 14 times in a week, but it doesn't just apply. Frequency, frequency doesn't just apply to ads. It applies to everything across all channels. So someone might be following me on Twitter, following me on LinkedIn, subscribe to my YouTube, and then they might see me like fucking 50 times a week for eight months. And that's what it took for them, them personally, to trust me and then end up becoming a client because they arose into the exact position to where they believed that my product would be the gateway to them achieving their desired result. And to, and to piggyback off of that as well, like I'm, I'm the type of person that's like very skeptical about like buying something online. So I really want to like be consumed in the person, like make sure that, you know, okay, like, is this person like legit? Right. So, um, you know, but I've also caught myself just like buying stuff just because like, I believe in the person and like, I, I love what they have to say. So like with Iman, like, I bought his like agency navigator thing and the digital renaissance thing because I literally watched the whole thing. And like, obviously like I'm a videographer and like, I I just watch everything. I was like, this is insane. I just had so much respect for it. I literally like felt bad at the end. I was like, this was so good. Like, I just want to be like part of it to some degree. So like you definitely have that piece of it. And then there's also, it's like, you know, okay, well I could be going through my entire year, right? January, February, March, April, May, maybe when I get to August, right? And I'm like consuming your content, right? So it's like, I'm watching, you know, Daniel tweet about this, you know, talk about this on YouTube and I'm seeing all this. And then it's like, uh, yeah, it's super cool. Like I love consuming his content. It's great. And then like I get to August, it's like, oh, I have this problem. I need to solve this problem. And then it's like, well, you've been the person that I've been consuming for the whole year. Yep. And it's like, oh, well that that's my go-to for the problem. And I think that's the the case of what it is. So like with advertising, like if you're, you know, like the one-time ads type of thing, you're getting the people that are impulsive. You're, you're hitting those people that have the problem now. But when you are building a personal brand, you are um, just creating, like you're creating this timeline where it's like eventually when they have that problem, then they come to you. Dude, do you want to know something crazy? So like I've been, I've been, I've been doing TikTok ads and like we've closed people like, like you've got some leads for TikTok ads and like one call close some of them. And then like I have high rows, so I can see like everything you click. Mm-hmm. Like I, I know the whole journey you go through because I, I, I put tracking stuff. I use print tracking. I see everything you click, like whether it's an email or whatever or whatever. When you end up buying, I can go and look like what's everything you did. And I look at some of these people and with, we've closed people from TikTok where it's just TikTok ad, schedule call immediately, one call close. And I'm like, you're a fucking psychopath. Like I would never do that. Like, yeah. I promise I would never, ever do that. Like I just wouldn't, but some people it probably just spoke so perfectly to them. And maybe they did go on like my YouTube and watch some stuff like before the call or something like that. But maybe they did some research and they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, our sales guys aren't dickheads. They're not going to sell it. They literally won't offer you if they don't think you're a good fit, like based off your particular situation, regardless of how much you make. This, this, this is kind of what happens in them. Um, 
in the sales team chat, whenever someone's like thinking about offering you, they'll be like, Hey, what is this? Like, do you guys think this offer would work? And they like tag everyone like me, Andre, Christian, Dan, and, and some other people. And then we'll just say, yes, this, this will hundred percent work. That that's definitely going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Give them a guarantee. Like we'll guarantee them results. I know this will work. Um, and, but everything I've done over time, like in terms of like producing content on Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube, I'm operating it under the context. If I want to position myself in such a fashion to where all of the stuff I've done, I would have been able to have sold myself because I would have watched hella shit continuously over and over and over and over again. So like I, I, I've been telling myself this lately. I, I was like, I need a hundred hours of me on YouTube. I need a hundred hours of me on YouTube because I would probably watch a hundred hours yeah. of someone on YouTube over a long period of time. I think that's like what it takes to for, cause like I'm like the same way where it's like, I want to go on to Instagram and see like, okay, this person has a history. Like I want to go back and see, you know, say for example, I'm going to use a trader, for example. Um, I want to go back and I want to see, okay, what was your last month? Like, what was your last year? Like, what was your last five years like, you know, okay, maybe, you know, you're on the come up and it wasn't five years. That's cool. Like, you know, I'm just not going to pay you as much because you're not as experienced. Right. So someone that's been in the game for 10 years versus someone that's been in for three, you know, it's like, okay. Um, one of my, one of my buddies, um, that became my buddy because I went through his product, you know, he was kind of on the come up and I just like, I watched closely. I was like, okay, let me see what he's posting. Let me see, um, you know, his videos, his YouTube videos. And it was like, okay, like I, you know, I've consumed basically all of his content and I like what he has to say. And then I bought his $200 product mm -hmm. and it was a $200 product, but I consumed also like the trading space. You know, there's, there's a lot of scammers in the space. So it's like, I want to so be so many. It's the yeah. worst one. That's, yeah. that's the worst industry mm -hmm. with the most scammers. That's yeah. Crazy. So obviously like I wanted to do my, you know, even though it was a $200 product, I wanted to vet it all out. Right. So I like, I watched all the dudes content because I, I, I want to see, it's not like, I'm not just buying for the sake of buying. I'm buying because I want to solve my problem. So it's like, you know, I need to consume all this content. It's not about the $200 that I'm spending. It's that if I spend this money, will it solve my problem? Mm -hmm. And so I'm vetting this guy out to see, hey, what he's talking about, do I believe, do I think that what he's saying and, you know, what he knows and what he's going to teach in that course is enough to solve my problem? And if the answer is yes, then I'm hitting the buy button. If it's no, then it's like I'm moving on to someone else. Yes, I think something, something that I think people discount a lot is having an association or recommendations from high profile people or just, just even being in the same vicinity or a single picture or a single video with somebody who is high profile and also has a lot of respect in like in industry and kind of like an example that comes off the top of my head is someone like Brian Moncada. So Brian Moncada is probably the best YouTube advertising guy on the planet. Like actually, He's probably yeah. the best YouTube advertiser on the planet. And now I've appeared in videos with Brian Moncada and Brian Moncada did a presentation at one of my client Ascension events. And I'm, I'm in pictures with Brian Moncada. So anyone in Brian Moncada's network who ever sees me with Brian is going to associate his level of professionalism and expertise. It's automatically relayed to me. Yeah. Because Brian Moncada wouldn't associate with me if I also didn't have expertise. He quite literally wouldn't, right? And if you're able to get into networks like this or like go join like masterminds or something like that and like actually talk to people and like exert yourself out into the world and like associate with high profile people you are going to be so much better off. And I can give you an example of this. I was on a consulting call. Someone, someone wanted to get on a, on, on a call with me. This is like a one-off call. He just wanted to talk to me about like scaling his thing. Um, we were talking about Twitter and like Twitter marketing and whatnot. And he's gotten like, he's gotten in fights with people before and whatnot with some like bigger accounts and whatnot. And like, and what that did, he discounted how actually detri detrimental that is that you don't want to be 
ostracized by the people who are the largest. Yeah. You don't want that to be a thing. That's that's so incredibly bad for you. Because if you were to if you were to associate like probably 70% of what made me get so big on Twitter. I have like 117,000 followers right now. I've had it for about three years. That wouldn't have happened if I didn't earn the respect of the people who were at one point larger than me. It wouldn't have happened. It actually wouldn't. Um, I remember, I don't know if you know Rogue Wealth on, um, on, on Twitter. I've heard of him, yeah. Yeah, but he was like, huge like sale sales guy when i first started on twitter and like he had a big account i think at the point at that point he had like i don't know 40k 50k followers or something like that he had a lot of respect like got, got just really good guys very knowledgeable and to earn the respect of him and get a vouch from him was a vouch to his entire network. forty thousand followers yeah so now the context of me having his respect is implanted to forty thousand other people immediately like he's following me, they go to my profile and they see, oh, like I really like this rogue wealth guy, and he's following this guy. So like they're they're associated or something yeah. like that. Or, and now this kind of translates with me as well, where it's like I tell people in client ascension, like if you're on Twitter and whatnot, I'm like, start producing sales assets on Twitter. I'm gonna follow you and like interact with it because I have the respect of hella high profile people and I have 117,000 followers who are going to see it when I interact with it. We have a we have an example as well like, you know, like I said with that big like client of mine that, you know, we just got I worked for like 2 weeks to go ahead and sign him, right? And then we had another dude um I still don't even know like how he was able to book a call with us. Like I don't know where he came from. You know, it wasn't from uh, one of our conventional ways. I think he was like referred by someone or something or, you know, was told to just go book a call with us. He's, and um, so we got him on the call, didn't know him. He didn't know us. And he was like, oh yeah, like I, you know, this, this is what I'm looking for. He didn't actually really even know what he was looking for. Like we just like talked about it with him and got him to the point where um, he was like, okay, I think this is like what I want. Um, and, you know, based on what his problems were. And he was also in the same space that I had just signed, you know, my larger client. And, you know, the larger client has been in the space for 10 years. And so pretty much everyone in that space knows him. And so I was like, oh, yeah, like he's like one of our clients. Bro signed the contract so fast, like, and didn't even like know us. It was just like insane. So like your network really is, I mean, it's so cringe to say your network is your net worth, but it's like, in reality, you know, like you said, it just like when you are networked with that person, it just unlocks, you know, so much. It does, dude. I, I've, I've, I've experienced this sometimes where like, um, um, someone kind of high profile, I guess you could say, joins client ascension. They have like a lot of followers or whatever, and I'll tweet that. I'll be like, this person just joined client ascension, just get immediately a bunch of calls booked, and they're like, because it's FOMO. It's like, yeah. Oh, like I, I want to be in there guy. too. He's in client ascension too. Yeah. Like, like okay so it's for that, Bras, those kind of people are, yeah i want to be in there that that's how it works it's it's intangibles there's so many intangibles you have to employ this is what i tell people like my clients i'm like dude you need to just be making content and displaying your competence and what you're capable of and like showing people what you know how to do and making videos off it. And like, if you, if you got, if you have a case study with a client and you were able to make them like a bunch of results, like turn that into a big document and like share it on Twitter and then show, like make a video on it on YouTube, how I was able to get the results and walk people through the whole process. And this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with sales conversations, where I was saying like, this person wants to get this, you find out what they want, explain what is required in order to get that result. And this is exactly how you would present a case study. So it's like this client came in, they wanted to get these results. So because they wanted to do this, here's what needed to happen. I did this, 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 and because of this, and this, 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 and I got the results from that. So I took that data and was able to produce this, 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 all this stuff. And what happened is over time, I had to keep iterating this over and over and over again and testing this. And I finally found this winner. And then we we did this with the winner. And then we tested all this and found another winner and yada, 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 whatever the fuck you did. And it turned out at the end of the engagement, six months later with client, now they're here. Bam, cool. So now this does two things, right? 
it, it does one thing in that you provide proof that you are capable of doing this. And it similarly also shows that you understand a hyper degree of nuance and you know what is required because when people who run larger companies, what they're trying to do, when someone is like thinking about purchasing an offer for you, especially if they're a larger company, they're less interested in a guarantee or a risk reversal than they are interested in their certainty that you will get the results. Large companies who buy from you don't want their money back. They want to pay you and get the result. Yeah. That's the difference. I was I was on a call once and um, you know, it was like I was going through everything. I was like, okay, so like, you know, what's you know, what's what am I gonna what am I gonna get out of this? And you know, it's like, oh, like we're gonna give you X, Y, and Z. I was like, okay, so cool. Like what happens if you don't get that for me? It's like, oh well then we refund your money. I'm like, I don't want my money refunded, I want the result. And, you know, yeah, like a, a, I think a, a risk free thing is is good. But, you know, the whole reason that they showed up on your calendar is because they want the result of, you know, whatever you're saying that you're going to get the result of. So, you know, it's it's more so about the actual outcome than it is like the guarantee for it because you yep. know they're not they're not giving you their money so that they can get it back they're giving you their money so that they can get the desired outcome that they yeah, signed the, up for the, the entire function of having a guarantee when you're when you're a beginner is to just get some demand generation like get people like something you need to get someone in the door so that you can produce the case study and deliver the result Correct. and it is only when you have the results in the proof that larger, higher profile, better businesses will work with you. The entire function of the guarantee is to be able to arise into that situation. So 100%. now on the back end, you could still have a guarantee and all the results and you will have higher lead gen, but it is having the results that gets the best clients. It just is. It's For sure. the results that sells them. Yeah. Um, so something that I wanted to, I have some notes here that, um, I have not really breached into, but I think a lot of our conversation has been really good. And, um, some of this is more like outside of business, but how would you advise someone to get started if they're at zero? Um, so this, this is, this is the one thing that'll actually change the, change the game for you. Um, I'm going to take a short form content agency as an example. Like you want to, you want to produce short form for people. You can't sell short form content. If you don't do short form content, it's, it's, it's really incredible to me because like I've said this before, but people will, people will pitch me short form content. It's like, they don't even do short form content. They're like, are you interested in getting more sales with short form content? And it's like, well, clearly you aren't. Why would I trust you to do my short form content if you don't even think you're good enough to do it yourself? To do it yourself. It's like, what do you, what do you do it? You have to do the thing yourself, or you want to do a YouTube editing agency. You want to, you want to script out videos and, and, and do the editing for people. It's like, okay, well, show me some, like, show me some edits. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, like, what do you do? Oh, I've never edited a video before. It's like, what do you mean? What do you mean you've never edited a, a video? It doesn't make any sense. If you're, if you're trying to sell YouTube editing as a service, you should make content related to that and try to produce clients and, and leads from YouTube. This works really nice if like you if you're gonna start up like a like a lead gen agency where you send like cold emails or something like that because then you just cold email it's like a cold email yeah. clients and someone gets on the phone like how do I know this works it's like you're on the phone right now it clearly worked on you right so that's obvious right there but if there's no symmetry like that and you're cold DMing or cold emailing people to sell them YouTube editing it's like well let me see some of your YouTube ed editing it's yeah. like you don't have any YouTube editing you're not gonna sell it it doesn't make any sense. Like it, it, it won't, you have to do the thing yeah. is what people don't understand. And so like for me, I think it's been like a little different, right? Cause like I personally am not in the season of life where I'm making short form. However, when I got started five years ago, I was making short form, right? So or not necessarily short form. It was, um, IGTV at the time. And it wasn't even me. It was like, I partnered up with this guy. I was like, I need to figure this out. Like, I don't really know how this works. So I started making videos of him. I was like, yo, like stand here. 
I'm pulling out my camera. I got my microphone. Say this. Like, let's talk about this, right? So I'm like literally telling him, like, I didn't know what I was doing. He didn't know what he was doing, but we were just like, we were going for it, right? So we grew an Instagram page from like zero to 4,000 followers in like five months just doing that. And then I started posting other videos. And this is when I, when I learned about hooks and like learned about how you can capture attention. And I started getting super creative with this. And I was like, man, like, I uh, like, I, I was getting to the end of my rope, right? I put out this one video. I was like getting mad. So I like, I reflected that in the title of the video. And it was, I believe the video was um, uh, something like when Belfort realizes that Cardone is an idiot. And like, I was like, I, I liked Grant Cardone, right? I like, I read his books. Like, I think his 10X rule was one of the first books that I read. And so like, I'm, I was just at the end of my rope at this point. So I'm like, I'm just putting this video out. And I put the video out and I was like the first video that got like almost a hundred thousand views on Instagram. I was like, yo, what? Mm-hmm. And so the next video I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm getting mad with the hook again. So I like put another one out and boom, like exact same thing. And so like I started to realize and I started getting creative with it. I was like, oh, like I, I did this one. It was like from Shark Tank. I was like, uh, it was like about like a shovel or something. I was like, what if I misspell shovel? I'm going to misspell shovel on purpose and I misspell it. And then people are raging in the comment section because I S-H-U. misspell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally, I, I just switched the E and the L. Like I wanted to have it be subtle. I was like, and it was cool because like, at that point, I think I was um, 19 years old and I had started when I was like maybe 16, 17. I started posting when I was like 18, um, stuff like that. And so I was like 19 years old. No, I was 17 years old. I was 17. Yeah. So I started when I was like 16 and I, and I was doing all this at like 17. And so at 17, I like, I was with some of my buddies and I was like, look at this video. See this? I'm going to post this and it's going to get mad views. I posted it and it got mad views. So it's like I learned, you know, through actually doing it, yes. like we we're saying, yes. like I did it for myself. Yes. I took a page from 4,000 to 27,000 followers organically in six weeks. Yes. I did it myself. I went and I worked for a business, grew them from 40,000 to 90,000 organically and basically did the exact same thing with their revenue monthly from 40,000 to 90,000 because you actually became good at it. And this is what people screw up. So how do I make a, how do I make a YouTube editing? It's like, bro, you're not good at YouTube editing right now. You're not like you've never edited YouTube videos before or whatever. You're trying to sell that, bro. You're not good at it. You're not, you have to be good at it by trying things because you figure things out that weren't obvious to you at some point you find nuance and you become hyper skilled at it that's how i got good at you're, cold email you're selling your wisdom and experience yes yes that's that's what you're you're selling that's what people Not the youtube tutorial that's what people want to purchase they want to purchase your experience because they understand that they will have to go through a long period and they'll have to the, the kind of person you sell done for you services to is the kind of person that doesn't want to buy a course. They just want it executed right now, leveraging your experience. They're paying more to have it done quicker. Yes, that's that's how it works. They don't want to go through that period of having to do it themselves. And if they're like, I think this is a great comparison to make, right? Say, for example, I need to learn something, right? I can go to YouTube and I can go figure it out. Maybe it takes me a week, depending on how complex whatever you know thing is. Maybe it's a year. Who knows what it is, right? Um, Now, if I can go to someone and I can pay them, you know, X amount of money to do it for me in a day, well, that's valuable to me. But the thing is, it's like you are paying for that person to have gone through that process that you would normally have to go through, right? So if it takes me a year to go through that process, I'm paying you this amount because you went through that process for the entire year and you've experienced and you have uh, all the knowledge and the wisdom from going through that for an entire year. So it's like you are now qualified for me to pay for that one year of experience that you've endured and put this, yourself through. This this is what people like, if you, if you were at, if you were at, the beach or something like that you're walking around there's like no water fountains or something like that there's there's a bunch of people and they're like i'm so thirsty like i forgot water like i'm so so, or i I really love a drink right now or alcohol or something like i'd order some food i'm so hungry it's like i don't know it's far off in the middle you like you probably sit there and be like people are like asking for that like they would buy that right now like they they would buy that right now. Mm-hmm. You go through, you find weird shit. Like you 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 play around with things. Like let's say you you go read some Russell Brunson books and you get a free trial to ClickFunnels and you start playing with, around with ClickFunnels and you start watching some like tutorial videos on ClickFunnels and you're like, 
Um, they're like, oh, what else can I build websites with? It's like, oh, like Webflow. Like, yeah, you can build on Webflow. And Webflow is pretty complex. And you start playing with Webflow. And then they're like, well, like you're looking at like the forums or something like that. And you you heard in Russell Bronson's book about email marketing. You're like, well, like I think Webflow looks better. But like, how would I how would I get like the email submissions from Webflow over to like uh, this email marketing service? So you're using ConvertKit or something like that. It's like, oh, you use something like Zapier. Like, oh, you can automate stuff like that. That's really interesting. It's like, what about like if they're like, like call scheduling over here? And, and then one day you're in a conversation conversation with i don't know some random fucking person you find in the world and they're saying yeah like i run this business i run a i run a med spa or something like that and like our website is like so it's so outdated and like what we really need is um we just want it to look a lot nicer and we we want the form submissions to like go over here and like go over to this scheduling software and now you're like oh shit wait like i i like know how to build a website on webflow and i know how to like zap over form submission data to other applications like what's that application you're using oh it's this oh let me look this up real quick oh yeah like you can do that with a webhook on zapier is that going to do that over here and here and here i can build that for you They're like you could do that like yeah like here let me show you some like uh some some like examples and you pull up some like webflow templates like it can look like this like oh oh wow that would be amazing yeah i'd love it if you can do that like how much how, how much do you charge and you're probably like uh like what 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 the last guy do it for it's like oh yeah well, this is like four years ago we paid him um we paid him uh, ten thousand dollars to do it he's like oh i can make it look like this for ten thousand dollars it's like oh okay congratulations you just yeah. got a client like, <laughs> like that it, 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 shit like that happens only if you know how to do things yeah. right so like exactly. what people do is they they think they hear Learn a high income skill and sell the high income skill as a service no 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 no, no. you just learn how to do hella shit and then, like, you're in the arena, I guess you could say. You're on Twitter. You're on business Twitter. You're yeah. watching videos. And there's, and there's another piece of that, too, where it's, like, it's not even just the skills that you offer, but it's the enjoyment of working with you, right? So we've signed some people in, like, the money Twitter space that have been people that would not normally go work with, like, a short-form agency or go work. And, and I, I say that, you know, we're a short-form agency, yeah, but I, I, I say it's a lot more than that. Like, not most short form agencies aren't like flying out to Tampa and shooting in-person podcasts. Right. So I really enjoy the in-person shooting and like, um, you know, being with the person and, and, you know, taking videos. If I have the opportunity to assign someone for, you know, half or not, I wouldn't say that's probably bad, you know, but if I have the opportunity to assign someone, you know, that I get to work with in person versus someone that I have to like do stuff with uh, over the phone or like over zoom, whatever, like I'm always going to choose the person in person because like, one, I get a better feel for them and a better feel for the content that we're going to be putting out. And two, it's just like more enjoyable. And like, I like being on set and like shooting. And it's like, I have like all the equipment to do it. And like, it's just something that I enjoy. So, you know, with that, like we've been able to sign some people in the space, not because they just want short form, but because, you know, I'm able to, you know, for example, um, I don't know if I should like name drop, but, um, you know, one of the, one of the clients that, that we have, he, you know, yeah, like he wanted short form at first. He was just like, oh, like I don't need someone to like just edit short form for me. But then it turned into, it's like, oh, like you can come to the shooting range with me and you can make an entire like, you know, movie edit of, you know, me going to the shooting range and, yep. you know, and, and then we can turn that into shorts. It's like, yeah, like I would, and in fact, I would actually love to do that. You know, picks me up in his G wagon and we go to the shooting range and I pull out my red camera and, you know, literally just shooting a movie for two hours. So it's like, I, for one, absolutely enjoy that. And two, that's way more valuable to him because, you know, he can like at the end of the day, it's like if you just want your clips edited, yeah, you can go find someone on Upwork, you know, to do it for, you know, a couple dollars a clip, right? Like you can do that. And like if that's all you want, please go do that because yeah. we don't want to work with it's you. A different value proposition. Correct. It's just, it's just different people mm -hmm. would buy that. And then you have other like different subsections of the market. So like say, say you could – like say you were like outbound prospecting or something like that. There's a segment of the people, there's a segment of the population who just like don't want to do video. Yeah. Like they just don't want to, there's a segment of the population who doesn't even know short form is like a big thing. There are people exist. They're like LinkedIn types or some shit like that. They don't even know short form exists. Right. And you could present it as a new opportunity. You could take that angle with that market specifically. And then there's another market who knows short form exists and they, and 
And that they just they just don't want to be on video. They're not ready to do that. I was like that at some point for two years. I wasn't on video. I wasn't on YouTube. I wasn't doing it for a long time. That was me. And then there's people who know like video is good, but they don't even know that like there's people that exist that would fly out to them or do that or like get them on a Riverside interview. Yeah. There's just different sections of the population. It's very interesting to me because you can be on Twitter and you can have all these guys spending up these stupid auto DMs where it's like, hey, are you interested in growing your business with short form content? It's like, bro, you're trying to sell short form content to the single most sophisticated market for that offer of all time. If you go start prospecting short form content as a way for like a a, a, a two times founder who exited his business and like just published a New York Times bestseller and he's on LinkedIn and you and you go to him and you tell him, hey, I could fly out to you and like record videos with you. You can post them on TikTok and, and Instagram and YouTube and get millions of views and spread your message. He'd be like, wow, that's actually really interesting. Like I can, yeah. that's a thing. Like and, you'll do that. And the cool thing about that too is like, Yes, Twitter is literally the most sophisticated. It's like we have clients and it's like this is something that's still new to me, right? We'll give them a video. I'm like, this is a banger video. And they're like, yeah, can you change this, this, and this? I'm like, what? Like I've, you know, Twitter, like signing clients from Twitter is the only place where I've had people that like we've made a banger video for and they've like, you know, been like, oh, yeah, like I want like, you know, all these changes to it. Like, yeah, obviously, like if you're doing like a big project, it's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, say I'm shooting a wedding video. Yeah, can you change that? And, like, that's one thing. But like in a short form piece of content, like I've never experienced that before where it's like, you know, some people, um, you know, that we that we sign, it's like they're just happy that a video is on their feed that is, you know, has like some text on it and their face behind it. Right. So like, obviously, that's like less sophistication. So it's like if you I don't know if this is like necessarily a bad thing. I would love to hear your take on it. Cause I don't view it as like taking advantage of someone because at the end of the day, like I, I think that some people, they overcomplicate it and like they have this, they set this super high expectation. Um, we, we have a client now where it's like, I'll send them a video and it's like the video is like very polished off. And then it'd be like, Oh no, no, no. I don't like this. Like change the animation here. It's like, I think it's higher ROI for you to just put out this video and then let's make the changes on the next yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, So what what you have to do is like if you're doing something specific and they're saying like I want this change, what you like counter with is like so I under like what you want to do, like the reason why I did this is because I know you want this end goal and over here like the function of this video is for like to 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 get cold people. Now like I know I know it's like be distributed and get find new people to follow you. We are also going to make other videos that more so just are for people who already follow you and are aware of you. And you're like explaining stuff like that. And now like I can give you a, a, a for instance, you have to be able to explain context like this to people and reasonings for them. So I'll give you for instance, this is one guy who's like, he came to me and he was like, bro, you're like YouTube videos aren't good. I can make them better. And I'm like, and I'm like, like, show me what you've done. And he's like showing me stuff from like, I don't know, like gamers and just like random shit and i'm like that and and what i was trying to explain to him is there is a fundamental i didn't even explain it to him i just thought it i just didn't reply to him because i just didn't feel like explaining it so but but what i was thinking was that there's a fundamental difference between the kinds of things you've been doing on youtube and like like this hypey video and like mass market entertainment i'm not making videos to entertain people i'm making videos to educate to convey value convey competence and get people to buy my shit like that's what i'm trying to do i don't need to post video it doesn't make any i don't want the mass market and the best way it's like with someone like that it's like if you're going to be editing videos for someone or like you know anything that's like um you know, it's multiple thousands of dollars <clears throat> per month in a retainer, right? If you are like prospecting, it's like, okay, like there's this big person in the space, take one of their videos, edit it, a piece of it. Hey, I can do this to your videos and send that to them and make yes, it super, super easy, if, right? If I was work. like, hey, Daniel, like I have this like super cool YouTube editing style that I think is going to 
crush it. Here it is. And I send it to you. It's literally a Loom video. You click it and you're watching yourself in the edited form right away. The likelihood of you, first of all, just responding is going to be so much higher because the result is there, right? People have to realize that people at a higher level, it's like they only have so much bandwidth in a day and they don't have bandwidth for you and your laziness, right? So it's like they're you get to a certain point in revenue where it's like, you know, like you said, like it's done for you. They want it to be like, so from the beginning of you presenting to all the way through, you know, you fulfilling them, it all has to be that done for you. Right. And I think a lot of people, they, they kind of get stuck in this frame of mind where it's like, Oh, I'm presenting this, you know, done for you offer. But you know, the, the, the pitch is not done for you. Mm -hmm. It's like, that has to be done for you too. Right. Hey, like, you know, go check out my video here. Like that's not done for you. Like here, this is yours. Yep. That's done for you. Yes. Right. Yes. Like yes. show them the service that you're going to yes. provide. Yeah. 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 So this is when you start prospecting to like a higher end of a, of a market like that, it, you need to do things like that. And uh, another note to make is that sometimes you're prospecting to like high value prospects. And, um, this happens a lot and it, it's kind of, it, it, it'll happen specifically in this instance. So I'll get people pitching me like, Hey, like, can I, like, I can edit your YouTube videos. And it's like, I have a YouTube editor. Like, I, ha I have an editor. And then what they're trying to do is, like, they fundamentally don't understand. I'm like, you're the only way that you're going to sign me for your YouTube editing is if it is so clearly 100% obvious that you are the absolute way better option. And the only way you could do that is if you were to show a very clear end-to-end, -end, I worked with someone who is basically an exact replication of you from here and brought them here. If you can't show that to me, like, and I mean, it was someone exactly like me, you will not scout me from my current editor. Exactly. It will not happen. There's zero situation. You might be able to get away with some kind of augmentation on their current provider where it's like, Hey, what about like, would you like edits like this or something like that? You might be able to sell me like a, like a thumbnail service or something like that. If your thumbnails actually are good. But this is what's so funny with a lot of people too. Um, you should do like free work in the beginning if you don't have like a ton of clients. And like an example of that is like thumbnails or like edited shorts and something like that. But I've had people do this to me. Like free work of that person. Not just like, oh, yeah, of there's that, something of that, that like I've examples. made. Like that's literally, you, you make an example, you just send it to them. I, right? will, I will say this. Every single client that we have worked for for free and attempt to sign them, we have signed. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it, at scale. It would normally be like a ten percent, fifteen percent purchase conversion rate, like literally that high. Like it's actually that high. It's insane. Mm -hmm. However, people have done this to me, and their work is shit. It's just garbage. Yeah, people have sent me thumbnails. I'm like, bro, this looks like fucking shit. This doesn't look good at all. And they'll send me like shorts or something like that. And it's just like, this is garbage. Yeah, this to, to isn't put that good. in context, one of the couple clients that we like worked for for free, we made like we shot the like I shot the video with, you know, the camera that's recording you and not the one that people are viewing this on a different one for shorts. Um, I shot the video with him in person. We edited the video and then he posted the video and then that video got 1.1 million views and he grew from under a thousand followers and he's now at like 45,000 followers. Now from that video alone is like 25, 20, 25,000 followers. So it's like, Yes, we did the work for free and we got him results for free too, right? It wasn't just like, oh, like I pulled out my iPhone and made this, you know, video with, you know, oh, yes, there's a time and place for that. But it's like as a service that we are selling, it's like there has to be a level of professionality, right? So the other client that I, you know, really wanted to work with, I made him videos. And when he posted those videos, right, he posted those videos. They were good enough that he posted those on his feed that he has been curating for 10 years he posted those videos and they performed well. And because of that, he was like, I want to work with you. And the, I, the, I really do not see a scenario where if we are sending someone videos and those videos are performing, they do not work with us. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's a hundred percent of the case. If you have zero clients and you're doing like 
free work and no one's signing with you, it's because your, your free shit work fucking is sucks. Negative. Like your shit is not good. Like it, it actually just isn't good. And this goes back to the fact where it's like, do it yourself. You are your first case study. Every single person has one free client that takes zero effort to acquire. It is yourself, right? And it doesn't have to be a direct one-to-one thing. You did this by growing like a theme page and like doing shit like that and figuring out like Correct. that. I built right? a portfolio yeah, of like what I'm capable just of. had a portfolio. Results. Yeah, it, with, and it worked. It delivered X specific result. Like it yeah. just did. Like when I when I met up with that, like I grew that theme page, and then I the the first client that I like ever got, um, one I pitched him at a low price. I did an entire day of shooting, editing, and everything for him for free before I even pitched. I didn't even pitch him anything. I just went and I filmed with him for an entire day and gave him everything. And then the next time after I filmed an entire day, then I pitched him. I pitched him a a, a lower number, and I also came into that knowing that okay. Like I had a conversation with him. He's like, I'm making money, but I don't have the reach I want. I want more reach because I know that will break. Like he had a system in place to make money if he had more reach. Mm -hmm. And I showed, I literally pulled out my phone. I was like, here's my Instagram. I reached 1 million people in the last seven days. Like you can see it in the Instagram analytics. And he's like, if I had that, I would make a lot more money. So that's exactly what we did is like I started working with him and I made him videos that expanded his reach. And what did he do? In the first 30 days, he more than did he did more than 100 percent revenue increase. So it's like, you know, my portfolio was okay. Yeah, maybe it wasn't like a short form video that I had created, but it was you know theme page videos. And it's like here are the results for the last you know however many days of the video of the content that I've been putting out. It's so simple. It is. <laughs> it, like, it, really, it really is so simple. Just get results. You, yeah, you just you, you got to actually be good at the thing. That's pretty much it. It's just it's that's that's why I'll say sometimes like, oh it's gonna take you like six months to sign your first client. The function of the six months is not you prospecting for six months. It's you becoming actually good at the thing for six months. Correct. That's what takes all of the time. Correct. It's just getting good at the thing. And like, you know, we we had a client and they were a big client and we had to like pretty much fully refund them because um, because they were a bigger client, they wanted that guarantee. And, you know, so we gave them that guarantee and we couldn't fulfill on that in the way that we would have liked to. Now, um, there were, there was poor communication on our end when it came to the type of content that they wanted. So they wanted like super niche down content. And, you know, we tried to shoot some content that would, you know, perform and they're like, yeah, we don't want that. I'm like, okay, this is a problem. So it basically got to the point where it's like, yeah, like this guarantee is never going to get hit because, you know, we are not able to um, put out the content that would get you to that guarantee. So it's like we had to refund them. But, um, you know, scenarios like that happen. But, you know, kind of where I was going with that is, you know, it's like every client is going to be different. And, you know, you, you have to understand what you're capable of. And if you're not capable of something, like you just have to say, you know, look, I'm not, I can't do this. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes back to like what we were talking about earlier. Oh, you want this result? What is required to hit that result? And Correct. if you aren't competent, if you've never done it before, you don't know what is required to hit that specific result they told you they wanted. So if you haven't done this before and you don't know how to get such result, you'll just have no idea what is required. This is the point. This is why I'm telling people, if you're trying to sell something, you need to go do it yourself so that you can discover what is required. And when you know what is required, that is your competitive advantage. That is what gives you that hyper-specific knowledge. You have to go through that period of acquiring that unknown knowledge that not many people know because that knowledge, the facilitation of that knowledge is what people buy when they buy services. If you don't have knowledge that people don't know, they just won't pay you. Exactly. Very simple. I want to cover two more things briefly. So one, how have like your your values or have they shifted at all in the last 
couple years of business from, you know, when you got started, maybe when you're like 21, 22, 23 to where they are now? Um, yeah. So in the beginning, it was kind of just like in the very beginning, it's like replace your job. Like I don't, I don't want to have a job. And then it turns into, um, and then I, there was a period where it's just chasing all time highs. And I'm, I still kind of do that where it's like, cause you get this dopamine rush when you hit an all time high and it, it feels so good every time you hit an all time high. And then like, if you don't hit an all time high for a really long time, it's like, you get like frantic. It's like you're a drug addict. You're like, I need it. Like mm-hmm. I, you get psychopathically obsessed with it. It's like, I need to break the record and you just keep going and going and going. Um, but really kind of like over, I'd say maybe like the past six months I've, I've shifted towards like be in business for a really long time, like 10 years, like 20 years, like be, be in business for a very, very long time. And just, you can't and just grow very consistently. I'm mm. not trying to double next month. I'm trying to very, very gradually over time, go 10%. up and up, could grow quarter over quarter, quarter mm. over quarter growth, quarter over quarter growth, continue and just, just do it like that. And just stay, just be in business for a, a long, long time. That's how you kind of have to fundamentally shift. And if you start thinking like that from the beginning, you actually do way better and you have a lot more patience. And then it's, I, I think you probably, if you think like that, it's like, oh, how can I get the system in place for this the last three years? How can I get this foundation in place so that, you know, I can build on this for the next three years? Whereas if it's like, I'm just like doing this. Like, I don't, like you said, I don't know if I'm going to be in business for a year. You're going to take shortcuts that you shouldn't have taken. And, you know, I think this is true across the board and literally everything you do. Um, not even just business, right. In trading and sports and relationships, it's like, how can I enter into this and play the long game? Cause your decision-making is going to be very different. Your mindset's yeah, going to be very different. You have to shift to long game. Like mm-hmm. you really think of it on a very extended time horizon. That's what you have to do. It's, it's, it's the only way. And you, you can only win if you do that. But that's the only way you win is if you think very long time horizons. Awesome. And then the last thing, we're still recording, so we'll keep going. The last thing that I wanted to wrap up with is how has your faith tied into business and life recently? Um so like I was I was raised Catholic Christian. So like I, I was baptized, had my confirmation, everything like that. Um, but I, I always didn't like, I went to like the, the church school, like on Sundays and, and when I was Wednesdays or something like that. And it always just like, I was just never interested. They never made it interesting. I was like, this like sucks. And then I went through like a, a really long period where I was kind of like agnostic, I guess you could say. And then like, I'm on Twitter and people are talking about like, like praise God, like Jesus is Lord. And it's kind of like, and it, it, they were making it like sound cool. Mm-hmm. It was, it was like, cool to have faith. And I was like, let me let me just pick up, let me just buy a Bible and like start reading the Bible. And I start reading the Bible, like word for word, actually pick up the Bible and read it. Because like so many Christians, Catholics, you just haven't actually even picked it up and read it word for word. You've yeah. only just listened to what a, like a priest or sermon guys told you. You read it and you're like, holy shit, this is crazy. Like this is some this is some wild shit happening in here where it's like yeah so angels fall down god god makes humans angels fall down they mate with humans they make nephilim and the nephilim god doesn't like them and he fucking annihilates them off the face of the planet by drowning them and it's like this wild stuff bro and then like like the description of angels it's like spinning wheels with eyes all over it and like that and then like i remember seeing this for the first time like pictures online where it's like what people think angels are what angels actually are it's like these crazy looking beings and i'm like dude what the fuck and i start like buying other stuff and um like i guess like spirituality type stuff and and then it kind of like you kind of like morph it into like science and whatnot like, what is heaven is heaven actually just like a dimension up where it's like and then you like i think it's called like kundalini oil or something like that it's like it's something that excretes from your pineal gland and it goes down your spine and then back up and it takes 33 days to do so and then it's three days it's dark and then like on like the end of the third day like ignites your brain it's like oh that's pretty interesting because christ that yeah 30 mm-hmm. dead for three days and then like comes to life and it's like oh that's a weird symmetry yeah like that. And there's and a you lot start to of see, that like, symmetries between everything and then you look at like you look at like, and they say things like, 
like everything repeats and then you look at like stories in the bible and i feel like it's it's almost as if like stories in the bible are just like situations with which you will experience in life because every single thing repeats in some fashion where it's like it has the same theme behind it and then it's i don't know i i i feel like if it, you, you start to respect it and like you you kind of just start to operate with like a, a a more of a respect for for like the world and its nature and try to operate off like a like a like a level of divinity and you feel like and and it you feels start divine. to yeah and you start to to see too how like everything is so connected like yeah you know all the the stories kind of lead up to you know Christ being born in his story and you know how the bible starts off with a marriage between Adam and Eve and then it ends with you know us and you know being the bride of Christ and the bride so it's like it it starts with a marriage and ends with a marriage and um you know just shows like the importance of marriage to God so um, and everything's like a cycle and then you can yeah. even look at it like business cycles yeah it's the same it's the same thing everything repeats if you just start paying to everything repeats over and over and over again and it's like people say like uh you you'll 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 be given a challenge until you like understand the lesson and it's like you start to see like things like that and you just start to see the symmetries between everything and you respect it you're like oh okay there's and like you, and you see how god is like you know given people challenges because they're not ready for something if you overcome the challenge you are rewarded yeah. and then you are presented the next level of challenge correct and you will keep facing that challenge until you learn the lesson and then you go higher and you ascend you literally just ascend it's yeah super crazy yeah. no it's, you have it's, you just have a you have a better respect for life and, and you look at things differently 100 percent. and it's like you know your your moral compass is also like different like i feel like if you are just like an atheist and don't believe in god it's like where are you pulling your moral compass from society because you know that's not not super great in 2023 so um you know for me uh you know i did a i've done podcasts with you know fellow christians i've done um with people of the, the the Muslim faith and just both. It's like, I just have a much higher respect for because one, they believe in something. Even people and, just believe in karma. It's like, Oh, I'm spiritual. And you just believe in karma. But it's even like, if yes, you believe in that, like your yeah. moral compass is just going to be mm -hmm. better. Yeah. So, Correct. um, you know, it's just like, those are the, I would much rather be around people yeah, that feel, have that. Like some people, they just operate like you're being Drones. judged. Yeah. You're being judged. You're being watched, mm -hmm. not like watched, but you are being judged. Yeah, like, like what there's you are a consequence what, for your actions. Yeah, what you are putting out into the world slingshots back to you. And it actually, that is real. Mm -hmm. What you put out into the, the frequency you exert gets pulled back to you. Everything you do comes around. Yeah, and Always. there's, there's consequences for your actions. And even just, uh, you can even tie it into things like physics. If I push this, there's an equal and opposite force it pushes back quite literally karma but if you think about like your actions it's just a different dimension of it mm -hmm. it's just a different dimension of that occurring there's an equal and opposite force exactly what you put in is exactly what gets back out 100 percent. well cool with that we are right around the two hour mark so um joint client ascension joint client ascension and uh if you need short form content check us out as well links will be in the description Please. appreciate you good pod Thank you.